this table is getting pretty interesting now. We have a label at the top that we were we're using this very sparingly used go to. Um, now, and it's working. It's working just fine. Um, why is go to? Why should it be so sparingly used? Let me show you why. First of all, let's do this again. I, I think this is important. If I if I copy this um, this line and I'm going to do it again, I think it's a little trick I did before to copy the line and I'll show you what I did in a minute. Oh, I might as well show you now, but it just it's a glancing uh, shot here. I just I pressed F8 for block functions, and then I said copy C, and then I said copy the line I'm on, and I did that by um, pressing enter, and that means the actual line that you're standing on, enter for current line, so I, hit, I want to copy from the current line to the current line, meaning just that line, I want to copy that line, and where do I want to copy it to? I want to copy it right to where I am, so I hit enter, so I did F8, C, enter, 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 a <laughs> pretty quick way to copy a line, and um, Okay, I don't want it twice. All right, so I copied this line because I'm just going to change one thing. I'm going to look at the fields real quick, and I'm going to say that I also want to make sure that they always fill the customer type field. I want to know if there's a D or a C in there. I don't want them to leave it blank. So that's field 20. Excuse me, that's field 19 equals customer code. This one equals 20. So if 20 equals null, I want to do the same thing, except I'm going to change my little message. I'm going to say customer type must be filled, and I'm going to put them into field 20, not field 21. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the top again. So if they're smart enough to fill these two fields on the, when they enter the screen, enter the data, they won't hit this line because this will be false, and they won't hit this line. But if on either case they forget to fill this field, this is a nice way, nice simple way to make them fill it. And let's try it. Let's just see how this works in, in, in sort of organized way, and then I'll explain to you why I'm so obsessed with the go-to command and not using it. Let's go into this record. Um, let's go to a record that doesn't have anything in it. Okay, we'll update this record. We'll go down somewhere on the record. We'll press escape, escape. We'll say, yes, everything looks hunky-dory. The very first thing we said is we, oh, we have to fill a customer code. So we'll make it B-A-R-B, one, two, three, four. How's that? Now we'll press escape, escape. And I'll say, yes, everything looks hunky-dory. And once again, now it's saying customer type must be filled. You heard two things. Okay, so I hit enter, and we'll make our regular customer then we'll press escape, escape. Does everything look like Dory? Yes. Okay, we're finally finished. Now, why is this so important? Why did I show you this twice? Very simple. There's a better way of doing this. This is very nice and clean and actually fairly elegant. I mean, I've seen lots of tables like this where people are checking, did they fill this? And if they didn't, go back to the top just before their last final end statement. Um, they do all this. Okay. Is there a better way to do this? Yes. But before I can teach you the better way, I have to emphasize something I've already told you. And that is, FilePro is running with an input processing pointer. In other words, the, and, and by the way, this is probably the most important thing I'm going to teach you or anyone in this tutorial. This is worth the price of admission. If you learn this properly, what I'm trying, what I'm going to try and teach you, Right now, if you learn this properly, you will be a good file pro programmer, period. If you don't grasp this concept I'm going to tell you now, you're not ever going to be a good file pro programmer. It's that stark of a reality. So if need be, listen to this section over and over and over again until you understand what it is I'm saying. File pro uses a processing pointer. And it's when you first press escape, escape, it runs the input processing pointer. It starts it here at this instruction, the first if line, and it evaluates this if line. And if there's, if it's true by virtue of being blank, it does the then line. In this case, it's a declare, but that's okay. It does it. You know, FAPO has already loaded all the declares, I told you. It doesn't really execute a declare line again. But in this case, it's, it's meaningless. A then line is meaningless. So it falls to the next if line. And it evaluates it, and it does this. This is a place where I'm hitting an input command. 
file pro is giving control back to the user. It's asking the user to type something in, so it's it's no longer on the processing table. I mean, the user is no longer on the processing table having things done for him automatically, line by line by line by line. File Pro hands control to the user and leaves the processing pointer right here, right at the end of this command, waiting to do what's ever next, either something that comes after a semicolon, or if there is no semicolon, File Pro is waiting right here, as soon as it gets that input from the user, to go down to the if command and test that. Knowing where your input processing pointer is, is absolutely the most critical thing to being a good file pro programmer. Because the input processing pointer is the main table pointer in this case. We're in clerk, it's the main table pointer. Okay, it's the one that's, that's controlling pretty much everything until you hit an end statement. Okay? Right now at this input, while while we're waiting for the user to, to type something into this field, um, our processing pointer is right here at the end of this command. And if the user goes to the bathroom or leaves for work or whatever, our processing pointer will stay here and wait and wait and wait as long as that screen stays in that condition with an input question on it waiting to be answered. Now, here's the, the crux of all this. The next command that gets executed is this, the next this, the next this, the next this, and here we are at the things that we want to do better. How can we do it better? Well, why wait until they press escape, escape, and they've completely stored the rag, they want to store the record and go on to adding the next record before you check and see that they've added a critical field like customer code. Wouldn't it be nice to check this code as they're entering data. In other words, before you let them leave the customer code field, make sure they filled it with something. It's got to be filled before you store the record out on the disk, out on the storage. It's got to be filled, so why not do it when they're actually in that field? Make sure that, that it's filled. How do you do that? You do that with something called a trigger. I call them triggers. I did a long time ago in the File Pro Bible, and sort of it sort of hung on. I, I heard it in another... Um, Another database somewhere, I think uh, I think the first place I heard the word trigger, I, I can't really remember, might have been in um, a, uni, a Unisaur, so I don't forget what it is, some kind of, some other Unix-based database or something. I heard the word trigger and I thought, oh, that's neat, a mouse trigger something, this is what it is. A trigger, in this case, is not input processing. The input processing pointer does not move when you run trigger processing. I'm going to erase this code. I'm not going to check for customer code anymore on the input processing table. Okay? I'm not going to check for it when they press escape, escape. Why? Because I'm going to, I'm going to ensure that it's filled, that that customer code is filled when they, right when they leave the field. I'm going to make sure they put something in it. I'm going to use a when leaving field trigger. And the way to do that is not, it's, it's not on the input table here. It doesn't happen when they press escape, escape, so it's not from the top of the table here down to the to the end to, or to any end statement here. Um, it's, it's not there. It's below that statement, right where the subroutine, subroutine lives below that statement. It happens to be, you know, on this input processing table, but it doesn't get executed when they press escape, escape. This code I'm going to write only gets executed when it's triggered by them leaving this particular field. Look at that code. It says, at when leaving field 19. That's the precise label you need to do code when their cursor leaves field 19. Now, that means we're going to do this. At when leaving field 19, we're going to test. If, if their cursor leaves that field, and every time that cursor leaves that field, we're going to test and say, is field 19 equal to null? If field 19 is equal to null, we don't have to, we don't have to give them the message, say, hey, this field must be filled. Let's just put them right back in that field. Screen, comma, 19. Okay? We'll put them in that field, and then I'm going to do a funny thing here. I'm going to end. Now, what does this do? 
It tests, did they fill the field with something? If they didn't fill the field with something, put their cursor right back in it and end. Okay, here's another end down here I'm going to type. Why is that? Because if they did put something in field 19, if they did put any customer code at all, then this won't be true. It'll test the next if statement down, and all I want it to do is end. And when you leave a field and there's nothing to do, what happens? The cursor just goes into the next field on the screen. In other words, it ends. Uh, okay, nothing had to be done, so if they fill the customer field, yes, the trigger processing will run, not input processing. We didn't run the input pointer at all. We didn't, we didn't move the input pointer. It's still at the very top of the screen there. We haven't pressed escape, escape. Not pressed escape, escape yet. All we've done is trigger some processing, and the processing I triggered is the stuff that starts at the label for that field. At when leaving that field, 19, I want to test. Is the field full? If it isn't, put them on back, right back in that field and end. So that's all I'm going to do with this processing. If they have filled the field, I'm not going to do anything at all. I'm just going to end, which means to file for do nothing. Okay, I have not moved the input table trigger at all. Let's go see how this works. Okay. Let's just press update. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, I just left that field. I left field 19. My cursor, I'm going to press the left arrow. My cursor is in field 19 right now. And I'm leaving the field by hitting enter. Nothing happened. Right? It didn't, nothing really happened. I went to the next field. I, and essentially, I left that field. Nothing happened. What, what happened was I hit the end statement where there was nothing to be done. Let's, let's go back in this field. Let's clear it. Now I'm sitting in this field. I did a clear line to clear that to clear that line. Now I'm going to try and hit enter. Okay? I hit enter. Did you notice? I'm hitting enter again. I'm going to press the right arrow. I'm going to go all the way over to the end of this field. I'm going to press the arrow, right arrow one more time and try and go into that next field type. Press the right arrow. Huh? I'm back in that field again. I'm hitting enter. I could hit enter all day long. I could press the up arrow. I just tried to press the up arrow to get to the bottom field on the screen down there, and I, I didn't. I'm going to press the down arrow. It's constantly do. What it is doing is checking, because I'm triggering that little tiny one-line process, I'm triggering it by leaving the field. It says, is this filled? Nope, it isn't. Put them right back in it. So this is a very good way to make people say, oh, I better put a code in here. I'm not ever going to get out of this field. Now I left the field, it's okay. Now I can press the down arrow, I can press the up arrow, you know, I can do just about anything I want to leave that field and everything's fine. I have not run the input processing table, have I? I have not pressed escape, escape. That's the thing that makes the input processing pointer move. All I moved was a little at when leaving field pointer. A little, essentially, uh, we'll call it a subroutine pointer. It really isn't. It's trigger. It's its own little pointer. And here's uh, the critical thing about this particular pointer. I'm going to say, yes, everything looks hunky dory. I'm going to get back out of here real quick. I'm going to go into this table. And here is the critical thing to know about trigger processing. This particular trigger processing at when leaving field, and there happens to be, you can trigger the same process or any processing if you enter a field upon your cursor coming into a field from another field or another location, you can do some processing too. At when entering and at when leaving processing, those two types of process can, you can only stop their pointer with, with four commands. And one of them is the end command. So I'm starting up a trigger processing pointer, not the input table pointer. I'm starting the trigger at when leaving field, and I'm going to keep running it until I'm out of if statements to test, or until I hit one of these four commands, and one of them is the end statement. Okay, what are the other what are the other commands that end it? Well, believe it or not, this command ends it. The screen command ends it. That end that we put there was absolutely superfluous. And here again is where I'm trying to teach you this most critical thing about FilePro. Where is my operating pointer? What pointer is operating and where is it? 
well, I'm not operating the input table pointer. I haven't pressed escape, escape. All I've done is left the field. And so I start my trigger, my at when leaving field pointer. And it starts right here on this first if line, and it tests it. If they leave it null, it does this line, and it waits right here, because this is an end. It says, I've done all the trigger processing I'm ever going to do, because I've hit a command that ends me. A screen command ends. There, it will never, ever go past here and do something here. We could put this. Let's try it. I'm going to put show at sign, so I put a little... Press enter prompt. I'm here. I'm here on the processing table. And then we'll put an end. Okay. Let's go leave a field blank and see if it ever shows that line of code. Okay. Let's go to a blank record. Here's a blank record. I'll update. I'm going to leave this field blank. I hit enter. It put me back in that field. It put me right in the screen. So now I'm going to fill it with something. I'll fill it with uh, gobble. Okay, now I'll hit enter. My cursor went into the next field. Did you see show? Did it, did it get shown anywhere? I'm here. No. It just it didn't. It never will show that. It will never. I'm going to delete, delete out of this record. I'm going to go back into the processing table. It never, ever will say, will never, ever go past the screen command and do some more processing. This ends the trigger. Once I start the trigger, here's my processing pointer. If that's true, it does this because it's something that ends it, bang, you're over. If this was not true, it's going to fall to this if line, and here's something that will end it, an end. Those are the first two things that end trigger processing. There are another two that end it, and I'll tell you what they are a little bit later.